Now, most of the time, hot teeth are associated with mandibular posterior teeth. Now, we're going to look at some of the studies that have looked at what kind of strategy could be used to actually make a successful inferior alveolar nerve block. Some scientists have thought, you know what, maybe you should ch change the local anesthetic agent itself. So a couple of studies have looked at the methibicane, articane, and they compared it to lidocaine. And they found that the inferior, inferior alveolar nerve block in patients with irreversible pitis showed that there are no uh, differences in success rate. So now we know that changing the anesthetic itself is not going to change anything. Another thought was maybe we should change the volume of anesthetic agent or the concentration itself. So um, increasing the volume of local anesthesia um, really uh, showed that there is no increase in the incidence of palpal anesthesia. And there are at least five studies that looked at the uh, volume and showed that there is no difference. Another study, another studies have looked at the concentration and they found that there is no differences as well. So now we know that increasing the volume or changing the concentration is not going to increase the anesthesia. As you know, there are uh, other uh, techniques of inferior alveolar nerve blocks. One is the Gau gates and the other one is the akinosi. So these uh, at least 10 studies have looked at both of them and they showed that it's not going to increase the incidence of palpal anesthesia. Some thought maybe our inferior alveolar nerve block is not accurate enough to uh, obtain the anesthesia. So the first one looked at medical ultrasound was used to guide the needle to target the uh, nerve. So they found that even if you get really, really um, uh, accurate anesthesia uh, block, you're not going to increase the incidence of palpal anesthesia. So we know that even if you get a very accurate uh, nerve block, that is not going to control the uh, hot tooth. Some other people showed that maybe accessory nerve are the reason for the failure of anesthesia. And uh, this study in particular showed that even if you combine the inferior alveolar nerve block with the mylohyoid injection, is not going to increase the palpal anesthesia. So really, um, they tried everything to see what's wrong with the, um, our techniques and they found no problems. How can we explain what's going on? There are some theories. Uh, one of them is the central core theory, which means that the, blood, the nerve itself is thick and the outer surface will supply the um, molars and the inner uh, will supply the anterior teeth. This is one of the theories. Uh, there are other, uh, at least other theories that show that maybe uh, in inflamed tissues there is a lowered pH. So let's talk about the lower pH. Theory, when there is inflammation there will be a reduction in the pH of the tissues around the tooth which ultimately is going to reduce the efficacy of the anesthetic agent itself. Each anesthetic uh, agent has a specific pKa, which is the dissociation factor. And this agent is not going to be as potent if there is inflammation around the teeth. The problem is when we deal with lower teeth, the location of the injection is posterior at the back, and there is no inflammation at the back. Um, so theoretically, Inflammation is not a problem in lower teeth. What can we do? I know that it's frustrating. Most of the study that I looked into are actually disappointing. So let's uh, be practical a little bit and um, let's talk about what can you do when you have a situation like that. First step is you give the inferior alveolar nerve block. Make sure that you don't numb the long buckle or the lingual nerve because this is going to confuse the patient and the patient might think that they actually got some anesthesia and you ask them did you feel any anesthesia and they will say yes so just make sure that it's not lingual block and it's not buccal block and then you wait for lip numbness once you have a lip numbness then 
Once the lip numbness is complete, then you do a call test on the tooth itself and then the adjacent teeth. If uh, normal teeth, which theoretically don't have irreversible papitis, are not numb, then maybe your uh, block is not successful and then you would have to repeat it. Once you repeat it and then you get a better uh, lip numbness and the teeth, most of the teeth are uh, not sensitive to cold, uh, then you can think of the supplementary injections. The most important thing is that please don't use the high speed on a tooth that you, you don't think that it's numb. Uh, it's much uh, easier to use a cold test. Just put a cold in that tooth and if the patient feels it, then you can repeat the injections. The worst thing that uh, could happen is that you drill a tooth that is still sensitive to um, cold. Once uh, most of the teeth are negative to cold and only one tooth is still sensitive to cold, then you have a true hot tooth. So, let's have a look at some of the uh, supplementary injections that you can give to a patient. First one that you wanted to think about is to give a articane as a buccal infiltration. Articane is much better than a lidocaine and it penetrates the buccal bone uh, so much faster than lidocaine. Uh, Kana reported that the success of um, articane as a buccal infiltration supplementary is 91% which is really high with the um, articane is sometimes it's not effective and the success in irreversible pulpitis is only 58% if you give uh, buccal infiltration and it's not successful then you can go ahead and do the intraligamentary injection the first one uh, the first injection would be the success would be at least 70% and then if you give another one uh, as a second uh, intraligamentary, the success will jump into 92 to 96%. Osseous injection is a very, very successful injection, but I don't recommend anyone doing it unless you have some experience with them. It's very successful and um, the success is up to 98%, but you really have to get a uh, some device help you uh, locate where to put the uh, injection and how much you give the injection, how many uh, milliliter to give inside the bone. I personally like to use the x -tip. I think it's one of the best um, um, devices that can actually provide a very successful uh, anesthesia. And the way it works that it's, both of them are attached actually like this this is the one piece and then you can separate them one piece will be in the uh, gum and the other one can be removed so you attach it to a hand piece and then you drill in between the teeth and then you leave the um, the sleeve inside there and then you put the injection inside that sleeve and then give only 0.3 milliliter because it's very potent and it's more than enough the thing is that you only have five minutes of anesthesia so you really have to do the um, pulpectomy really quick and then once you remove the pulp everything will be fine so we showed that the supplementary injections can help you be successful in most of the cases and the intraosseous um, injection can give you at least up to 98 percent but you still have at least two percent of the patients that even the enterosis will not work on. So what can you do? Well, in these cases, then you would have to probably give the patient a volume or some kind of uh, some kind of painkillers, and then come back in, on another day. And hopefully by that time you'll be able to numb the patient. Uh, but if you couldn't, and the patient is in emergency, then what you can do is you use a size two round round bear and then just sink it all the way to the pulp. This is called the intrapulpal anesthesia. Now, once you have access to the pulp, just a tiny access, then you can do actually the intrapulpal anesthesia successfully. Just put the needle inside it and then just give it under pressure and within five seconds, the patient will be numb. So, let me summarize everything together. 
uh, so you get the whole picture. Let's summarize everything. So you do the inferior alveolar nerve block. The success will be from 44% to 81%. So if you get a lip numbness, that's fine. If you don't, then you have to repeat it. If you get a lip numbness, then you give the articane buccal infiltration. The success varies from 58% to 91%. Uh, if you get a numbness, you put the cold and if the uh, cold uh, is negative, then you can do the procedure. If you still, uh, if the patient still feels the pain, then you have to give intraligamentary twice because twice will give you at least 92 to 96 percent. If you get a negative to cold, then you start the procedure. If not, then you would have to do the intraosseous twice, and that will give you up to 98 percent. Let's assume that it's not successful, then you do the intrapulpal using, using size to round bear and sink it all the way to the pulp. And then once you have access to the pulp, then you can give a uh, intrapulpal anesthesia using uh, uh, the, the anesthesia under high pressure. That is a very quick overview um, on how to manage hot tea. So, if you like it, please let me know, and if you have any sp specific question, then please send it to me, and I'll, I hope that I'll be able to answer them tonight. Thank you so much for all the questions that you sent yesterday, and I'm going to try to answer the interesting questions. Question number one. In intraligamentary injections, what kind of a needle we can use? You can actually um, use a small needle, and the location of the needle should be uh, in the distal root if possible because of the uh, direction of the uh, nerve actually comes from backward to forward and if you can numb the distal root you will be able to numb the mesial root but sometimes you would have to give another injections in the mesial root as well speaking of intraligamentary injection uh, it's actually a form of intraosseous injections and the uh, solution doesn't really travel all the way down the PDL it actually goes below the gum and then it will go through the bone. In intraosseous injections, you have to put the hole uh, uh, distally to the tooth. The only exception would be uh, in lower seventh. You really cannot go distally because the bone would become very thick and you won't be able to give a proper injection. So in lower seventh, you would have to go mesially and you would have to give more solution to be able to anesthetize the tooth. Another question was, why do we have to anesthetize teeth in necrotic uh, pulps? Yes, there is no pulp, but in necrotic teeth, what you really wanted to uh, anesthetize, not the pulp itself, but the soft tissue. So when you place a clamp, the patient will not feel any pain. Also, when you actually uh, put the file beyond the apex, the patient shouldn't feel any pain. So. Uh, in, in necrotic teeth, you don't really need an excellent anesthesia. What you really need is a, just a good anesthesia.